All right, let's walk through this example and just remember that these numbers can get so big and crazy that that's why we have computers to do this stuff for us. So when we come up with this RSA algorithm, the first thing we choose two prime numbers. So it says Bob chooses um, P equals 73 and Q equals 37, and we can get the product. And then he also chooses this encryption key E. And the only stipulation here is we have to make sure that the GCD, the greatest common divisor, is one. And this is something that certainly very quickly you can get an Excel spreadsheet to make sure that the GCD of 101 and 2592 equals one. So they have no common factors. All right, then it says this is what he's going to publish. He's going to give the person the 27, this is his public key, 2701 and E equals the 101. All right, from here now what we wanna do is we want to first find the inverse. Now this left column, I have a video which it shows right here that fairly quickly we can at least do the division okay so my video shows how to set up this formula to go through as you can see the remainder 67 the remainder 34 remainder 33 and then the remainder one now from here what we want to do is we want to put this in terms of the remainder so that's all I did was say 67 equals 2592 minus 101 times 25. And we wanna keep everything in terms of the 101 and 2592. So, so that's fine. There's 25 101s and only one 2592. I do the same thing here, the 34, which becomes 101 minus 67 times this one. Now what I do is I substitute. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is where I have 67, I'm plugging in this information, okay, for 67. And then I collect these, and so I can see that I have 26 of the 101s, because there's 25 right here, and then one right here, and then still one 2592. All right, do the next thing here, and pretty much going through the same thing, but now the 34, this value gets substituted here. My 67 gets substituted here. And again, I'm counting these values. So there's one, two, 2592s, and there's 25 plus 26, 51 of the 101s. And then finally, I stop when I get to a remainder of one, and once again, start plugging in these values. So this became my, oops, my 33. And then once again, my 34 got plugged in here. And finally, I'm counting these. And I only care, I don't care about the 2592 because that's already my mod. I care about these 101s because I'm looking for um, a multiplier. And so I can see that I have 26 and I have 51, and then that's how I get my 77. So 77 would be the actual inverse, and like everything else, I probably would go to Excel, and I would just simply type, type in mod 101 times 77, comma 2592, to make sure this is an inverse and that I get one. And I do. All right, now from here, it says Alice can send a private message to Bob using this key pair. Suppose that Alice wants to send this message, M equals 762 to Bob. Now, what we have to do here is we have to see, so this 768 was the message that was sent. The 101 came back from here. Okay, so that was my E. And then my bond 2701 came from my N. So the N and the E were given and then plugged into sending the message 768. I also have a video that I show 
how to set up this fast modular uh, exponentiation. So you might want to watch this to see how I came up with all of these values here. And I go through that and how do I know how many I where I have to stop. I'm looking at this 101 here in the middle, my power, that I, I am in between it. So 2 to the 6 is 64, 2 to the 6 plus 1. And so I know I would stop at 64. All right, now starts the actual algorithm. So all of that to just get to the algorithm. So the algorithm says, start with A equals 1, let B equal R. Okay, so you're going to see in this first case, that's my 64. And let C equal N, which is my exponent. And how this algorithm works is you, as every time B is less than or equal to C, you're going to go through these steps. If B is greater than C, you leave A and C alone and you redefine B. And you continue to do this until C equals zero. So let's see what's happening here. So I have this stuff over here on the side just kind of um, to see where these values are coming from. So it said to start with A equals 1, B equals 64. Remember where we got that 64 from right here. And let C equal my exponent 101. Okay, because I'm trying to I'm trying to find this 768 to the 101 power. And, and again, you might say, well, but you keep saying use Excel. Okay, try that. Try going into a blank cell equals mod 768 to the 101 power mod 2701. Excel can't even compute this. And so this is why we actually need these different powers. And notice they're in powers of two. Okay, two to the first power, two to the second power, and so on. All right, so the very first step is, and that's on this step right here, my A is 1 times 768 raised to the B power, and I'm going to mod this with my P, my 2701. Well, based on 768 to the 64 power, I see that's 2340. And that is something Excel will actually take. So now I can do my mod 2340 comma 2701 and I get my 2340. Probably didn't need to do that because I can see when I divide this it goes zero times with that remainder. But regardless. All right. Then it says to take C minus B and then B divided by 2. I go to the next round, and the next round I look to see is B still less than less than or equal to C? Yes, it is. So I wrap around. This becomes my new A, 2340, 768 to the B power. That's my 32 here. And once again, I look over here, my 32, I get 367. And I can go back to Excel, and I can type in equals mod. 2340 times 367 comma 2701. I mean, use Excel to do these mod calculations quickly. And I get my 2563. All right, next I take C, what C was, 37, minus B, I get 5, and then my B is cut in half again. Is my B less than or equal to my C? No. So I leave A alone. A stays the same. I divide B by my 2 again. And I leave C alone. I don't touch it. All right, once again, is B less than or equal to C? No, I don't think 8 is less than or equal to 5. So I keep my A. I keep my C. I divide my B by 2. Next round, now I have 4 is definitely less than or equal to 5. So I'm going to put my A times my 768 raised to my B power. Once again, 768 to the fourth power is that 1862. And I plug that into Excel, as you keep seeing me do, and I get this value. I take C, what C was, 5 minus B, and then I divide my B by 2. 
Round six is B less than or equal to C. I don't think so. I think two is greater than. So I leave A alone. I leave C alone and I divide B by two. All right, round seven. I'm bringing my 2340 times 768 to my B power and completely can just throw that in Excel and I get 955 and my C becomes one minus one equals zero. When C is zero, continue until zero, C equals zero, then we stop. So the encrypted message is 955. So we gotta keep going. So now we need to decrypt this 955 based on 955 raised to the 77 mod 2701. Remember the 77? Somewhere up here, right here, my decryption key. So moving right along. Uh, once again, I use the fast modular exponentiation Excel sheet that I showed in the video above. And I see I have to go to 64, so I have my values. And basically, I go back through the steps again. So I start with A equals 1, my B is 64, my C is 77. And I just go through exactly the same steps you saw me go through above. Remember, any time that B is greater than C, you don't change C or A. So they stay the same, but you keep dividing by 2. And then, as I can see now, 8 is less than 13. So in this step, I go back through all my stuff again. This is 955 to the 8th power. That 1200, remember, came from right here. And then just kind of showing you through, continuing right along until I get to C equals 0, and then I stop. And this last value is my decrypted message. So a lot of steps, right? There is a whole lot of steps to this. And this is why I tend to try to find, you know, if you find this online, get this over here, and I can start way back up here at the top. I had P is 73, Q is 37, I tell it to calculate in, which was my 2701. Um, here I want to calculate um, the 2592, which is the P minus 1, Q minus 1, that value right there. And then I found, or I didn't find, I had my E, which is 101. I checked to make sure it's prime, which it is. I solved for my D, which was 77, so I can calculate that. I calculate my D and then um, I'm looking for my M which was my value way down here at the bottom and so I can see that I get an M of 955 so I want a D I'm sorry my C 955 so I want to decrypt that which becomes the 768 so there's some of these steps, you know, like finding the inverse, it will calculate this for you automatically, but then just getting through these steps for this number. So this isn't, this isn't a fantastic web, website that I linked right here, but it will do some of the steps for you to help a little bit.